This is the installation guide for the Santoft roll hip system. This is the batten strap supplied in each roll hip pack and is used to secure timber battens to the hip rafter for the fixing of hip ridges. Place each strap centrally over the hip timber and bend each end down around the hip rafter and then nail into each side of the rafter. Once the batten straps and hip battens are in place, we can fix noggins to each side of the hip rafter to support the ends of the tile battens, like so. Once the underlay support trays are in position, we are now ready to lay the underlay. The first piece of underlay from one side should at least reach the centre of the hip line, but it is better to lap it over the hip, like so. The second piece of underlay from the adjacent roof face should overlap the first piece of underlay and the hip line by at least 150mm, but more like 300mm is better. Tack the underlay into place using clout nails. Once the underlay is in place, we are ready to set out and fix the tile battens. Fix the battens in the normal way. On the right hand hip, the batten end is resting on the centre of the hip rafter. There are no noggins in place. The batten ends at the left hand hip are resting on the noggins we fixed to the sides of the hip rafter. On this right hand hip, so we can add extra hip battens, first fix small pieces of batten over the hip rafter between the tile battens. If the batten ends are a little high, they can easily be sawn flush. Then we can fix our extra hip battens over the hip by nailing into the short pieces of batten. On the left hand hip, it is easy to just nail our extra hip batten over the previous battens already held in place by the hip batten straps. There we have the tile battens and the hip battens in place, and now we are ready to start tiling. This is the hip clip to secure the cut pieces of tile which cannot be nailed in the usual way through the nail hole. There are several ways we can use these. Here we can fix the clip to the hip batten through the hole at the very end of the clip. It is important that every tile and every cut tile is securely mechanically fixed. If the cut tiles on the left hand side of the hip don't reach the batten, they will drop down. So we use the top clip to secure the top of the tile to its neighbouring tile, like this. Another way to use the hip clips is to bend and wrap the clip over the head of the tile below. First, mark the position of the tail of the cut tile, like so, then put the clip in place and bend it over the top of the tile. We can add further hip battens if necessary to bring the hip timber up to the correct height ready for fixing the hip tray. To check if the hip button is at the correct height, we can lay the hip tray over the hip button, like so. If there is still a gap when the edges of the tray are resting on the tiles, then we need to add another batten. We are now ready to lay the hip roll, making sure it is placed centrally over the hip batten. The hip roll weathers the hip junction to stop water getting into the roof. A good tip when laying out the hip roll on profile tiles like these is to bunch the roll up slightly rather than pulling it taut. This makes it easier to dress the roll into the tile profiles. We need to make sure that the hip roll extends onto the ridge at the top, like so. The roll can be trimmed at the eaves. Once the roll is tacked into position over the hip, we can pull the backing paper off the adhesive strips. We can now start to dress the hip roll into the tile profiles. You can see no specialist tools are required. When fitting the roll ridge, we can make sure there is a good lap over the hip rolls at the ridge hip junction. Once the hip roll is fully dressed into position, we are ready to fit the hip trays. Line up the end of the first tray with the hip corner at the eaves. And then mark and cut off these parts which extend over the eaves. Once cut, we can tack the tray into position centrally over the hip button. Overlap each tray over the one below by 75mm. The function of the hip tray is to support the hip tiles and help the roofer fix them in a straight line. At the hip ridge junction, 
Mark and cut the trays to form a neat mitre. To fully ensure that the ridge hip junction is weather tight, we can fit a Coraflex saddle over the hip and ridge rolls. A good tip to mark out the saddle is to draw around the top of a builder's bucket. Before removing the backing paper, roughly form the saddle to the shape of the junction. We can then remove the backing paper and dress the saddle closely into the junction. Then any water getting through the joints will be safely shed out onto the tiles. Once the hip trays are in position, we are ready to start fixing the hip tiles. Starting with a hip starter, this is secured using a screw and sealing washer through a central hole. Once secured, we can put a hip union onto the end of the hip starter and then position the next hip tile. We then secure the hip tile using a screw with a sealing washer and plate through the union. We then carry on up the hip, fitting unions and hip tiles until we reach the junction with the ridge. At the hip ridge junction, we need to cut the hip tiles to meet as neatly as possible with the end ridge tile. Firstly, we mark from the bottom of the junction, keeping our line as vertical as possible. Then we draw another line here where the hip ridge meets the end ridge tile. Then we do the same with the other side, like so. Once marked out, we can cut off the excess using a disc cutter. Once cut, we need to drill each intersecting hip and ridge tile so we can secure them with screws and sealing washers. We are now ready to fit the cut hip and ridge tiles and secure them into place. And there we have the hip ridge junction. With the hip and ridge rolls underneath and the Coraflex saddle, the junction is perfectly waterproof. But it is not always easy to get a really neat intersection like this. So one option is to fill the gaps with a sealant. There you can see the sealant gives a neater appearance to the cut ends of the hip and ridge tiles. One further option is to put a Coraflex saddle over the top of the junction rather than underneath. This will still weather the junction and it will also hide any untidy cutting. Cut a Coraflex saddle wide enough and long enough to easily cover all three joints. It will need cutting from a 450mm wide roll. Put the saddle over the junction and dress it roughly over before removing the backing paper. Once it is in position, we will trim it from the bottom of the intersection, around here, keeping the edges parallel with the hip tile ends. Then we are ready to remove the first backing paper and position the saddle over the junction. Then we can peel the other backing paper off and finish dressing the saddle. Any excess, like here, can be simply trimmed off with a sharp knife. And there we have a neat, simple way of covering and weathering the hip ridge junction. And there we have the completed roll hip system.